Talking with Topher is sponsored by slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and naturalbossnh.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 125. Head of the game. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back. Yes, on this August 25th, 2022. How are all of you? I hope everything is going great or well or... Hey, I just hope things are going, okay? I really, really do. Um, I got a lot... I got got some stories to tell you on this episode. We're going to keep it short because when you're watching this, I'm actually working at New Hampshire Vape Gallery. I'm putting this together for all of you. Um... Back-to-back episodes, all right? Um, But I want to do say thank you to everybody out there to have, I'm going to repeat a little bit, but 1.2 thousand views on one of my shorts was one of the most amazing things, um, and I felt amazing because of all of you out there getting involved, giving the thumbs up, giving likes, and having new subscribers absolutely amazing and i thank you all if you are new to the podcast welcome welcome to talking with topher i hope you enjoy the show and again this is what keeps me coming back week after week so if you're new to the podcast remember to hit that subscribe button it is literally the most important thing you can do it helps support the podcast it helps support everything that i'm doing and all the work that i'm putting into it so go ahead and click that subscribe button it is the most important thing that you can do for me Um, it's free for you but this is not free to do if you want to get more involved with the podcast that's right you want to uh, get your story out there ask for advice or anything else send your email over to t-a-l-k-i-n with topher at gmail.com that's talking with topher at gmail.com and if i pick out your story and video whatever it happens to be I'm going to have you on my podcast. That is my promise from here on out. I have no more slow down clothing to give away. So if you want to be on the podcast, you want to be a guest, and you've got that story or you've had that struggle, send it on over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com, and I'm going to pick it out. I'm going to have you on the podcast, and you will be a guest on Talking with Topher. All right, that's T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And, of course, I'm on social media. Who isn't these days, right? Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Go give a follow. I appreciate everybody who does. And one more time, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And now with all that out of the way, let's get into today's episode. Uh, What I wanted to talk to you about today was actually I just want to tell you some stories from my past Um, Because I was thinking about them uh, recently with a few events that happened, you know, dealing with my nieces, uh, stuff like that. You know, Uh, kids today uh, think that, you know, everything is uh, so it's not that they seem like it's horrible. They think that we've never gone through it. Right. You know, um, I watch my nieces, you know, they're doing stuff, whatever, what they were doing was important. But my sister was like, look at this. They think they're getting away with something. And it's funny because they did. They actually thought that they were getting away with whatever they were trying to get away with. And we're all sitting there going, yeah, we've all done that. Um, and, and that the same is for me too. As it is for you, I was, I was bullied. I was made fun of. Um, I, I had my trials and issues and problems and tried to fit in in school and all this other shit. And now granted, I will, uh, accept the fact that bullying and all this other stuff, it it was physical when I was a kid, it was very, very physical, uh, bullying. And today it seems to be a lot more online bullying than anything else. And I'm going to tell you just from 
uh, what I know. And these are my experiences. And if you can insert your experience into mine and have uh, a similar outcome from it, then then do that. But if you can't, then I understand that you can't uh, uh, compare your life to mine. And I know things are totally different today with the internet. It's just that bullying is bullying. It's just somebody else that feels shitty about themselves. And they're unleashing on you because they feel that way about themselves and they know that they can get away with it when they do these things to you, right? Because like myself, I was not a big person. Hell, I wasn't even a cute kid. My baby pictures, I was pretty damn ugly. Um, You, you, I mean, my wife seen my baby pictures and she was like, you were not a cute kid. And I was like, no, I wasn't a cute kid. I wasn't a cute young kid. I wasn't a cute adolescent. Is that what you call it? So I've gone through this my entire life. I My name alone got me picked on. I mean, anything that they could pick on me for, they would. My mom used to dress me. It was horrible. The pictures of the clothes that I was in, oh, my God. I make fun of myself today for it. I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get it. I see it, right? But they're they're growing up in this new generation with all these phones and all this stuff. But they're doing the same things. Um, And that's what made me think about it. And I was thinking about the time that I got bullied when I was living in Lynn, Massachusetts. And I went to school uh, at Ford Elementary. And Ford Elementary was approximately two, maybe three blocks up from my house. So my mom used to walk us to school. And she would walk us up to school. And when I went to Ford Elementary, there was barely a four-foot chain-link fence surrounding the area uh, between the yards of the houses over behind it and then, you know, to the street. Uh, because there was houses across the street. You know, it's just a school smack dab in a neighborhood. Which I believe is the way they used to do it back in the day. And uh, we were in school, whatever, and recess shows up, okay? I don't know. Do we still have recess today? But anyways, we had recess. I go outside to recess, and I'm hanging out, and I want to be part of this crowd and all this shit, so I'm putting up with whatever's being thrown at me. Um, and then one, one person, uh, this guy or kid, he, he, there was words. I can't remember the words that were being thrown back and forth. Well, what I do remember is, is this person said a few things to me. I was done with what he was saying because everybody said it at this point. I think I was like, Eight or nine, I think it was like, no, I was, I was, I think it was five or six. I was about five or six when this all happened. So I, I I mean, like I said, my last name is Condorman. So anything that you can make from that, I've already heard, right? And they've been making comments, probably making fun of my last name, probably picking on me for my clothes and I decided to stand up for myself. I was like, I, I, and I said some words. There was no physical altercation out on uh, the, the schoolyard. Now, I don't know how most schools are, but Ford Elementary School had, like I said, the chain link fence, and the entire playground was hardtop. The jungle gym was on hardtop. Everything was on tar. Everything. Now, today you go to that school. I haven't been there in about five or six years in Lynn, that area. But you go there now, and there is a six to eight foot barred black fence surrounding the entire brick building. There are black bars on every window. It literally looks like a small prison. It's scary. I was like, holy shit, this place has really changed. 
Um, but it wasn't like that when I was a kid. It was a little four foot chain link fence. Everything was tar. Even those like those those like half moon things. I forget what they call them, but they got like all the triangles. You could climb them. Kids used to fall down onto the tar. I mean, it was a mess. It was a mess. But anyways, we have these words. I get upset. I per- I stand up for myself, right? And now the, the 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 recess bell rings. It's time to go back inside. So what I do is is I'm one of the last ones to come into the building. I don't know why. I'm not sure. Maybe it was just the way I was thinking. If I got behind everybody, maybe I can avoid any further confrontation with this guy. And as I'm walking through uh, the door, it opened up to the right. And, and so you're looking at the door, and, and it's, a, it's a wide opening. But this side here is, like, blocked up by, like, this metal thing. And the door opens, and then I'm walking through, and the person that I had the altercation with, the, the yelling back and forth, was standing behind the door. So I didn't know. I'm walking in. I can't see anything. And as I walk through the door, all of a sudden, he pops out. He takes a baseball bat and he cracks me in the fucking head with it. So I go down and I don't remember anything else. I barely remember going home. Now, mind you, I am trying to drudge up a God. Must have been 1986 when this all happened maybe 87. So like I said, I was only six or seven. Uh, uh, so these memories are very faint, but the one thing that stands out is I remember getting cracked in the head with that bat. And then I remember the last thing I remember after that was, uh, the school, the, I think it was my teacher because they probably, we all came back in from recess and I think they did like a row call. They were like, you know, are you here? Are you here? Making sure everybody came back in from recess and nobody left the school grounds or got abducted or something. I don't know if we worried about that as much, but I'm sure we did. Um, And I, I remember that the teacher came out and I remember being like shooken, like, hey, you know, waking me up. They were like waking me up. Um, I don't remember going back to class. I think my mom was called. She might have had to have left work to come and get me. Um, and, and of course we, we walked back home or she drove me home, whatever. Um, but that's what used to happen back in the day. Now, I don't know if I made friends with this guy after the fact or, if anything like that happened, but bullying is bullying. You know, whether you're getting bullied by words online, uh, getting bullied by words in school, maybe you're an adult and you're getting bullied by another employee. You know, it's the same. It's all the same. It doesn't feel good. Um, At least it doesn't come with a concussion because that's definitely my very first concussion. Um, I remember puking, uh, being dizzy. I wasn't allowed to go to sleep. Um, and that's really tough for uh, a young kid to absorb. Um, but this is just the way it went down. And, and I, wanted, I wanted everybody to kind of understand that, that even though bullying has changed in a sense, I almost find it, now, now let me let me kind of. It's not that I find it easier to get over because it's online. In my mind, you haven't been physically hurt, so therefore you can really just get through it. But here's the problem, and where I disconnect. 
The online presence is so brutal today that maybe the way I'm thinking is incorrect. Because not only do you get bullied online, but they can share stuff. They spread it around. Kids share it in school. So I think I understand the ramifications of being bullied online. But where I'm 42... I don't see the same problem. It's probably because I've already like put myself in check and I saw negative comments, right? On on my short. I saw that um I got thumbs down, right? And that's not the same as being bullied, but let's just hear me out here. I'm trying. It still bothered me. Right? If you got uh, uh, 18 likes and, 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 and nine dislikes, and it puts your video at a 61%, that's upsetting. But the thumbs down are just as important as the thumbs up. The negative comments are just as important as the positive ones. Um, and again, not the same as being bullied online today, but still, my ego's checked. Uh, I don't really have one anymore because it's unnecessary. It just gets in my way. I don't drink anymore, so I don't get upset about these things the way I used to. And where I've made myself public and I've put myself out online, YouTube, every week, two and a half years, go check out all my episodes, shorts, and guests. Um, I was capable of just Shooing them away. All the feelings that that I was getting from that. I don't think it's the same. But I I felt like it was comparable. And that's all I'm really looking for is something to compare these things to. But you will get through the bullying. And I'm not saying that this is right either. But instead of allowing them to tear you down and make you feel teeny, teeny, tiny. Take that anger, that upset, that whatever, and put it into what drives you. Do, put it into creativity. Put it into something positive. And I know, I, I, I feel like I know, like, if you are being bullied in school today through the internet, you're going to be dealing with so much, right? Every student sees it. It automatically gets spread all around school, so everybody knows, and it's this horrible, embarrassing thing, and it makes you feel like your life is over. Well, I felt that, too. When I woke up, had a concussion, And then couldn't go to bed. I felt like my life was over. And I was only six or seven. I was like, I can't go back to school. I'm going to get fucking hit by a baseball bat again. What what am I going to do then? I got to fight my way through every single day of school now? My mom picked me up. We went to the doctors. We did a few things. And she sent me back to that fucking school. Now, mind you, I had a different attitude. I was not scared anymore because if you're going to hide behind a door and hit me with a baseball bat, well, then I'm just going to fucking stand out front and get, get in front of this. That's what I'm going to do. And my dad also told me, don't let these fucking bullies bully you. Fuck them. You're no, they're no better than you. So fuck these guys, right? And I thought, I, I was like, I was like, no, dad, they're the cool guys. I need to be with the cool guys. And he's like, no. Fuck these guys. They're not cool. And I didn't understand what he was telling me. Just like my nieces and nephews think that they're getting away with shit from their parents. And they're not. Because we've all been there. We've all done it. The only thing we can do is share our experiences with you. And even though they're barely comparable to today, they're still the same shit. We still felt like our life was over. We still felt we like we couldn't go back to school. We still felt... Like we were less than, and they made us feel that way. So 
One thing I can tell you is even though the story may not be comparable, you can insert your story and still make it to the next story. You can push through that and, and, and better yourself and fuck these people that are picking on you. They're picking on you because they feel bad about themselves. Remember that. And maybe if you turn that anger and everything else into your passion and, and whatever you're working on in your creativity, when that pops off, that's how you're going to prove to them that you didn't get that they didn't get to you. Right? This bully got to me. But I didn't let him get to me. And I went through the rest of school that way. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell it? It's right here at the bottom of the screen. Or you can click the link in the description below the video. And now, before you check out, put in promo code T-O-P-H-E-R and get 10 percent off your purchase these guys are amazing they're always killing it look at this you got the wtf that's brand new music loving gorilla which is awesome i love the neon green and then of course you got tiki 2022 i mean they just keep doing it over and over again they came out with a bride of frankenstein deck they got the surf skull. They got new kid tees. But they've just got all kinds of new stuff. Medusa leggings, super bright flowers, sugar skull leggings. Look at this space monkey. Space monkey. Oh, it just keeps going. And they never disappoint. All right. So go to slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com today and get your t-shirts, hats, leggings, skateboards, swimwear, whatever you're looking for, they're going to have it for you. The coolest shit I've ever seen on anybody is slow down clothing. So go ahead and click the link in the description below the video. And before you check out, put in promo code T-O-P-H-E-R and get 10% off your purchase today. Are you tired of going to the same old vape shop, dealing with the same old clerk? and getting the same old response, well, you need to come to the New Hampshire Vape Gallery. That's right. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is going to be the number one vape shop you've ever stepped in. Why? Because we have it all, and we're easy to find. We're located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings. We're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m., and you can always give us a call, 603-814-4171. But we've got it all. That's right. Flavors, disposables, pouches, all the newest pod mods, all the newest box mods. We've literally got everything. And now we carry Delta 8, Delta 10, Delta 11, all of your THCO, HHCs. We've got it in stock for all of you out there. So you need to get on down or up to New Hampshire Vape Gallery, located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot, and next to Smoke Rings, where we are open seven days a week from 10.30 to 8 p.m. And feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. So stop shopping at those no-name vape shops and come and see us, the guys at New Hampshire Vape Gallery naturalbossnh.com that's n-a-t-u-r-a-l-b-o-s-s-n-h.com are you looking for some organic products are you tired of buying the same old shit off of the shelves that you buy all the time maybe you want to invest in small business because you know that they have a better quality product and get your lip balm your body balm you need some salve this stuff is great how about your beard? Is it snaggy and you want to make it smooth and silky? Well, get some beard oil. And then, of course, if you want to melt away those stressful days, I still highly recommend the foot and body soak. All right. So go to naturalbossnh.com today or click the link in the description below the video. It's the fastest way to get there. Why buy one product when you can buy all five of them? There was a time I was in lunch and 
Uh, fuck. It was Hood. Hood Elementary. So, no, Hood. Hood? I think it, the school was named Hood, but it was in between elementary and high school. Yeah, we had elementary school, one through six, and then we had mid school, eight, seven, eight. Then we went to high school, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're in middle school, I'll just call it. And, and I'm sitting at a table at lunch and I'm eating my lunch. And I see this person across the way, a table, a table away from me. And he's sitting there talking to his friends. One of the cool guys that I wanted to hang out with. They're pointing, they're laughing. So I just stuck my middle finger up and I were, I, I mouthed them. Fuck you. And at the time, I was uh, I was I was going through a lot with my mouth surgery. I had braces. I had headgear. There was a lot to fucking pick on. There was a lot to pick on. And so I went to go to my class. I was going up the stairs, and lo and behold, he was coming down the stairs. He stopped me on the stairs. He pushed me up against the wall. He said a few words. I don't know why I can't remember what people say, but that was, that was, that only the actions stick out in my mind. And so he, he, uh, he punches me in the face. He, something like, you going to say that to me again? And I was like, yeah, fuck you. And I spit in his face. And mind you, he just punched me in the lip, which put my lip through my braces and cut me wide the fuck open. So I'm bleeding everywhere now. One shot. So I spit my blood in his face. He didn't like that. He tried to punch me again. I got out of the way. Uh, we we, we kind of, when, when I shoved him, he, he fell a little bit on the stairs. I fell down the stairs like a fucking moron, right? So I pushed myself down the stairs. I don't know how to fight. I've never been in fights. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I did karate for a second when I was like nine or 10. And so I get pushed down. I I fall down the stairs. He comes down the stairs and he's, you know, ready to fight. Neither one of us, I believe, knew how to fight. Right. We're only in like fucking uh, seventh grade. And he punches me. I go to punch him. I miss. He hits me. Um, I, I, I go to punch him again. I miss, right? And then he just hits me with a side, a side cross. It just fucking cracks me. Now, mind you, we're moving all over the hallway and now we're in front of the guidance office where there's chairs outside of the office. The doors, (coughs) doors open. He cracks me in the side of the face. I see stars just like the baseball bat. I spin like a top, crash down on those chairs, get back up. He's like, you want more? I go, no, fuck you. And I spit in his face again. And uh, that was my, that was my weapon. That was it. I was like, I'm just going to keep spitting on you. It's the only thing I got. I can reach you and I can hit you with it. So I'm doing it. Plus it's bloody and it's gross, right? I walk into the guidance office and by this time, there's already teachers in the hallway. The guidance counselor has stepped out, and I just ran into the office. The guidance counselor came in after me. The other teacher's dealing with him, and it was just a giant fucking mess. And then I explained the whole story. Uh, they do what they do, and I think we both ended up getting suspended. I was like, whatever, it's not my fucking first time, and it won't be my last time being suspended. I mean, I was suspended in elementary school for bringing a fucking snake into class. That's a story for another time. But, so, bullying happens. And even though I understand that it can feel, or maybe it is even worse today, because it, it, that, was, that was isolated, right? That was isolated between the multiple teachers and... And just the kids that saw it in the hallway until they got shooed away to go to class. So nobody else saw it. And, 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 and I always, 
I always thought that my friends were going to help me out of that situation, right? Hey, come on, guys. This guy... It, nah, man. Nobody did shit. That guy was on a different tier, and everybody wanted to be on his tier. So, therefore, even my friends who said that they had my back and would help me jump him after school backed out and was like, nah, dude, you're on your own. I think you should just let this one go. Why? Because every single one of them ended up being his friend. Because that's where people want to be, right? You want to be with the popular people. You want to be on the in crowd. And that's where I wanted to be as well. So guess what I had to do? I had to fucking swallow my gut. Or sw- swallow my... I had to swallow. I had, all right. Put this down inside. And you know what I did? By the time we went to high school, we were all friends. And that's the way it worked when, we, when I was growing up. I mean, I got into another tussle in my own neighborhood. This one didn't even have... Wasn't... It was... It was... It was... It was student to student, but it was when I first moved to New Hampshire, right? I'm riding my bicycle around the neighborhood. I'm just getting to know the neighborhood. I'm figuring it all out. I just got out of school. You know, we're, we're, we're in summer vacation. Um, I only had to do a little bit of schooling there because of the simple fact that we moved from mass in the middle of a school year. So, I'm, I'm learning my area, right? My mom finally let me take my fucking bike out past the street. I can go around the neighborhood now. That was exciting. And as I'm going around the neighborhood, lo and behold, I'm riding by this house, and it happens to be one of the people that were making fun of me in school. He's sitting out his window on top of his little roof there, and he's yelling, and, hey, what the fuck you doing? Hey, Hey, blah, 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 blah. you know, just words. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And he's screaming and he, whatever. And I'm like, oh no, I'm getting the, I'm getting out of here. Right. And I, I'm, I'm going out and then him and actually, uh, two of my friends today were with him <laughs> and they all get on their bikes and start chasing me. And they chase me because now I'm trying to turn down my street to get back down the hill to my house. And as I take the turn, one of them caught up to me, hit my back tire, knocked me off my bike. I go on to the side of the road, right? And then they're, they're all getting off their bikes. He's coming up to me, right? And as he comes up to me, I am reaching for my bike pump. I'm like, well, I, I always carry a bike pump on the bike, right? I'm looking for it. And I finally grab it. And my friend of 30 plus years now. <laughs> goes, look out. He's got a bike pump in his hand. And that fucking kid went, oh, really? Punched me in the face, grabbed my bike pump, beat the fuck out of me with my own fucking bike pump. Sent me home crying. This is elementary school. I went backwards, forwards, backwards. Sent me home crying. I go down the hill. I am in tears. I go into the house. You know what my dad said to me? Shut the fuck up. You're fine. You got into a fight. It'll be okay. This is the early 90s. So I had to suck it up. And you know what I did? I just avoided that house for a little while. I avoided that bike route for a while. I didn't even want to go back to school because I knew he was going to be in my class. In my home room. We were the same fucking age. There was no avoiding this person. And by the end of that... Oh, excuse me. You know, By the end of that summer, you want to know what happened? I was riding my bike past that house one more time. When I finally got the guts to do it again. And he came out that window. And he called my name. And I looked up. And I went, what? Yeah. Hey. He's like, come here. I was like, nah, I think I'm good. It's it's, it's good, man. It's good. He's like, no, no, no. Come here. I put down my bike. I walk up to his front door. And he meets me at the front door. And he goes, dude, come on in. Come on in, dude. I'm sorry. And 
even though I have not spoken to this person in 20 plus years, I actually at one point thought he was dead. I really did. Him, a couple other of my friends got heavy into some drugs. And I know a couple of them didn't make it. And I knew a couple did, but I wasn't sure who. Um, but I bet you I could still see him today. And we would still, like, we would probably start off where we did, you know, when we were in high school. Um, Because we were good friends. It's just once you leave high school, everything else kind of changes, right? So because of that, I got a really good friend out of it. He might have uh, beaten the crap out of me. He might have uh, made me feel little, sent me home crying. But back in the day, that's what we did. We got bullied. We got into fights. And then we ended up making friends. So what I think all the younger people today should do, and I'm not saying it's going to work. I don't know bullying on the internet. I just don't. I don't believe that it hurts you as much as physically getting hurt. But like I've said a hundred times, your mental health is just as important as your physical health. So even though you're not physically getting hurt, I do believe mental pain is more painful. But again, you can change that. You can change the energy. You can change the way, um, the, where, where the future goes. And if you put that into creativity, well, then you're going to beat them when you become something because of what you've created. And it doesn't matter what you create, whether it's art or it's comedy or if it's podcasting or if it's music, whatever it is that you have a passion for, put all of that anger and hate and everything, all that embarrassment, put all of that emotion into your art. And I bet you a million dollars that you will be Amazing. Because when you put true passion into your creativity, that's when your creativity really shines. I believe that. I'm angry right now. I'm re-recording this podcast right now because I got no audio on my first recording. And even though this one is not like the first one, because they never are, you can't duplicate this shit. It only happens once. I feel like this one is a little bit better because I have this anger behind it and I have more passion for it. And all the bullies that bullied me, we either became friends or we didn't. I learned to avoid that person or I ran right into him. And that's what a lot of life is. A lot of life is trial, error, and fucking not getting it right. Maybe always getting it wrong until you get it right. It's tough. This is not going to be easy. There's no fucking participation trophy for waking up or getting something done. No one gives a fuck if you got it done until you do something really, really impressive and everybody wants to see it. Everybody wants a piece of your music. Everybody wants a piece of the podcast. That's when it actually counts. But don't count yourself short. And even though you feel like your life is over in that moment, let me tell you from my own experiences, my life's still not over. I'm still experiencing those feelings. And I'm still pushing through to become a better person, podcaster, human being every day. The only difference is is I've learned to redirect my passion, my anger, my emotions, and use them for something more positive instead of negative. So that's, that's how I, I, I think um, I, can, I can show everybody that you're no different than I was when I was your age, right? 
And I know nobody under the age of 18 is possibly watching this podcast. And if you are, you should shut it off right now. You shouldn't be watching this shit. But over the age of 18, your life is not even started yet. If you're a male, your frontal lobe doesn't even fucking finish until you're 25. I believe women are more closer to 21. They are very, they're smarter and way better at shit than guys ever will be. Um, You know? They mature much faster. So I feel like their, their, their frontal lobe must mature faster as well. Um, but your life isn't over. None of our lives are over until they're over. Okay? So remember that. Try to remember that. Yeah, I know it's hard in the moment. And I know it's hard while you're dealing with it. But I truthfully do believe that Everybody will get through it. And there's no reason to stop your life because somebody else felt like your life wasn't worthy. It's, it's not up to them. It's up to you. You're, you're, you're worth it. I believe you're worth it. Just like all of you out there believe I'm worth it. All my subscribers and all of you people out there that like, comment, and everything, that means everything to me. I never thought that I was going to get such a great response from everybody. I actually expected the opposite. I expected all the internet bullying. I expected people to jump on and be like, you're fucking stupid, get off, blah, 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 blah. No. You get, you get what, whatever you're putting out is what you'll receive. So if you're putting out a lot of negativity, you're going to receive a lot of negativity. And if you're being negative and bullying somebody, I feel bad for you. Because I know that deep down inside, you're hurting. And if you're the one being bullied, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Talk to your parents. Okay? Talk if you're not old enough to get therapy outside then talk to your parents. They've already been through this. And tell them, I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to listen to me. Because at the end of the day, the one thing your parents want is to be included in your life. Because they, they see their little baby getting bigger, getting older. And I don't have kids, but I talk to my parents. They explain this stuff to me. And it makes sense to me. And if I had kids, that's what I would want. I would want to be involved in their life as they're growing older and pushing me further away because they don't think that I would understand. And I'm telling you right now, all of your parents understand. All of them. And the only way that they wouldn't understand is if they were like isolated in some bubble and their parents didn't let them see anybody ever. That's impossible. It's impossible today. And it was a possible back then. You know, you can still have homeschool. There is ways to do it. Very, very few amount of people going through that experience. So, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to express that because it was something that I was thinking about. And I wanted to share it with all of you. That's, that's what I love about doing this. I can share my experience. And if I get one person, just one, to realize... That holy shit, I'm not alone in this. It was all worth it for me. It was all worth it. But, all right. So, that's the podcast for this week. Like I said, I'm keeping it short. I am at work right now, grinding it out, putting in those extra hours so that the owner could take a vacation. Um, And, uh, because we all need it. We all need to take vacation. We all need to take a little breather from everything. And then when we come back all refreshed, it's all right. You know, it's better. It's better for everybody that way. So I just hope that you enjoyed the short podcast for this week. Um, Again, thank you. Thank you to everybody out there for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. Thank you so much. You are what keeps me coming back here week after week. If you are new subscriber... Welcome. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget, there's plenty of guests. There's more guests to come. There's a short every week. 
Um, at least I try to, and if I miss one, I double up. But again, if you're new, if you are a new subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. I just, you know, want to see more. So go ahead, share, rate, and review the podcast. If you are completely new to the podcast and you're just stopping by and checking it out, click that subscribe button. It's the one thing I'm asking everybody to do. It is 100% free for you to do. It helps the podcast. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you want to get more involved with the podcast and have your opportunity to be on the podcast, that's right, I'm all out of slow down clothing, send in your email. Send in your email with a voice attachment, video attachment, or type it on out with your story. Maybe you're looking for advice. Maybe uh, you had a struggle and you just got through it and you really want to share this with everybody, but you're not sure how to do it, send that email over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talkingwithtopher at gmail.com. And if I pick it out, I'm going to have you on my podcast. We're going to talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about aliens and other things, but you're going to get the opportunity to be on a podcast with me. Okay, and of course, if you want to follow me, I'm on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Go there, follow, and with that all being said, I hope everybody out there enjoys their Thursday. I hope you have an amazing weekend, and as always, I will talk to you later.